All right, Jim. So I appreciate you coming back for a second time. No problem. And, and just to cue everybody up, uh, I interviewed James before he was going into the Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp, I want to say about a little over a year ago. And now he's gone through it and he's working as a developer. And I wanted to kind of, you know, after the fact, right? Before you were an aspiring, uh, you know, junior developer yeah. and, and like, like, man, I'm going to do it. I'm making that leap of faith. And now... You've come full circle, you got your first job, you're doing well, and kind of talk about your keys to success. Just want to thank our sponsor, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. You can check them out at devmountain.com. If you're interested in iOS development, web development, Salesforce, quality assurance, UI, UX, Dev Mountain has a ton of great certification courses where you can go and not only uh, get sk some skills, but they'll also uh, help you with their career workshops and they provide housing with their tuition so you can get up and go today. Not to mention the online and after hours one so that it fits with lots of people's different schedules. Check them out at devmountain.com. Yeah, so uh, might you update everybody a little bit on what you've been up to? Yeah, so um, after Dev Mountain, because I'm originally from Florida, um, so I went to their Dallas campus. So after Dev Mountain, I ended up having the chance to come visit my girlfriend in Chicago. And I got a bit of traction here in Chicago, but not much traction back home as well. So I went home for the winter break and then came back to Chicago since there's a bunch of startups and stuff and just kind of grinded it out. I ended up doing an apprenticeship while I was here. And that kind of leveraged me as well to get some developer experience, more professional experience. And then um, through the power of networking and Slack, I ended up uh, running in with a CTO at my company and we talked and I had a phone interview, in-person interview, and then ended up with an offer like a week and a half later. So I've been up in Chicago now for about seven months and I'm pretty, I, I love the area and the opportunity that I have. And you mentioned an apprenticeship. What could you go into a little bit more detail about that? Yeah. So I guess backstory, I was at a meetup. Meetups is probably the, the best thing um, to go to when looking for a job. And this apprenticeship that used to work with a, it's called the Difference Engine. It used to work with a boot camp here called Actualize. And it used to be kind of like a feeder program for boot camp grads to get some professional experience and build projects for nonprofits. Well, after that, the Difference Engine decided to break off and just be their own entity. So they took in boot camp grads, people who don't have degrees, may have degrees, but just anybody who knows how to code but want to kind of get to that next level for their junior developer skill set or job. Um, ended up meeting up with the CEO and joined it and it was about a 17 week thing. And my skill was pretty much just meet up three times a week for about three hours, three hours and work on a nonprofit project full stack. Just kind of, you know, grow as a developer until I found a job and move on, you know. Nice. So you you went through Dev Mountains program and mm -hmm. Um, if I if I remember correctly, it took you um, a couple months after to 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 you know you went through the apprenticeship program, then you landed your role. What were some of your keys to success to make sure that you know you came out of the boot camp and you kept on and you were going to be successful in your adventure? Definitely, yeah. So the first one was preparation. The second one I have to say, and I'll explain you know after. Um, the second one I have to say is to be humble, work hard, have consistency, and then also have a plan. The whole the whole time i made sure during that mountain my plan was laid out and i kind of if i needed to craft it that i would um so i guess talk about the first thing preparation i wouldn't recommend going into a boot camp just thinking that they're going to hand you everything um that that's just not how it's going to happen you can't cram something into somebody's mind and have them do it and expect to be a developer ready in three months so if you have a cohort that starts three months from now then you need to be coding three months from now every day or to some extent to get you up to level because i see preparation is kind of like a, a xp chart like if you have zero xp when you go in you may hit level one by the time you finish but if you've already gone in level one through five by the time you start dev mountain you probably can get some more xp you know it, it can it can compound you know i saw preparation for me to really help me because there's sometimes there's people in my cohort who you probably could tell hey they probably didn't put as much in before and it showed like when assessments came up or just something that you would need to know had you put in that little bit of shift work before Dev Mountain started, it kind of showed. So preparation is probably the number one thing. In terms of preparation, what were some of your keys there? What were some of the resources or how, how did you prepare? Yeah, so I did free code camp before I even thought about Dev Mountain. Um, and once I found out about it, I started diving more into, you know, just free code camp and trying to find out what other ways or what was the hottest ways. 
So free code camp was one thing. Um, another thing was definitely maybe a Udemy course or two or something on the side that would just give me some structure outside of just whatever free code camp offers. Um, and then the third thing was kind of staying in my scope, like knowing the fundamentals before trying to jump out and use every little um, language off the bat, just get fundamentals down with free code camp and Udemy or whatever sources. Nice. I believe your second note here was be humble, right? So yes. this is something I, I'm so glad you mentioned. And I, I want you to give a chance to, to explain what, what you mean by that. Yeah, so definitely uh, a boot camp will kick you on your ass. And if you go in there thinking, hey, I'm the top mighty, I'm the, the alpha, you know, alpha male, the alpha your omega of code, when you go in there, it'll knock you on your ass. And that sometimes can be detrimental to your success because you may think, hey, I'm going to breeze through this boot camp and get a job but something during your cold one day might just tick you off and you're just like i'm done with it you know you may quit or just not even be as successful because of it and being humble um i i get this from my dad being humble with anything allows you to learn better number one and that's the whole purpose of the boot camp to learn and number two it allows you to be a more personal person whenever you're talking to someone these recruiters these mentors anybody that's dealing in the tech community they one thing that people look at is personality and if you're not humble with your experience in Dev Mountain or anything outside of whatever boot camp you attend, people notice that. These recruiters and companies, they talk a lot more about you afterwards than you think they do. You know, sometimes they may share information or have coffee and like, hey, yeah, this guy, he, he wasn't really that humble. He seemed like he knew it all and wasn't really looking for a junior opportunity, you know. So uh, being humble definitely allowed me to learn more and soak in more, be a, a huge sponge while at Dev Mountain. And even now at my, you know, working opportunity as a developer. Yeah, I, I really like that point because there is a a decent portion of developers, <laughs> regardless of senior level, architect, you know, junior, that, you know, if they have opinion about something, they're it's it's great to argue your opinion right. you know, or viewpoint, but you you also have to be willing to be like, hey, you know what? This is a crazy space and I don't know everything. Right. And you know, there's people who have never coded a day in their life who might say, yo, why don't you do it this way and see it from a completely different way? Exactly. Line. Exactly. And then you're like, oh my goodness, why didn't I ever see this way? Thank you so much. And I know I've been in that situation where I've I've been talked to down to and I've talked up to people who have many years of experience. And when the exchange is like that, and it's just it it really comes down to be being humble. And so I'm right. really glad about that point. So point three here was work hard. Um, and uh, I, I feel like this is one of those things that is easy to say and hard to do. So exactly, how, did, yeah. how did you do it? Yeah. Um, so I guess with working hard, I, one thing I got that from was my dad, me, him being a truck driver, it was just hard work. It was manual labor, but he loved doing, you know, he loved doing it. So that's one part of working hard. Um, the second part was I didn't want to go back to where I was before Dev Mountain. I was stressed out. I was in college. I just I didn't like life at that moment. So I had something to look for. Like, hey, if you don't do what you need to do now and put in an extra four or five hours after the, the day ends for the cohort for that day, then this could push you back where you was, you know, at the beginning of the year. I didn't want to go back there. You know, I was looking for a life change. And then the second thing or the third thing that made me work hard was, hey, this boot camp was not cheap. You know, I took a leap of faith, uh, invested time, money and, you know, plane tickets, all of this stuff into this this opportunity. I have to work hard because three months is going to go by fast and I better show results. Otherwise, I'm just kind of out in the open. You know, and those are the, definitely the three things when it came to why I worked hard. It's funny that you mentioned like not going back uh, to like the way things were, because like I've, I have this this thing for me personally, and I, I think it's probably is going to sound somewhat relatable to you. It's like where you have like negative the the negativity of like the stuff you're like yo i'm not like it's great running towards you know what's gonna make me happy but i'm also running away from what's making me unhappy exactly. and yeah. the negative role model exactly and that sometimes is even more motivating it's like look i don't know what the grass is like over here i hear it's great but i gotta I get the it. hell out of here yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly man yeah and that was kind of like the top thing like where i was i was like look I need to do something. I'm not going to the military. I'm not about to just go grab a job just because because that that's not fulfilling and just go grab a job and work somewhere. I need to find something that I enjoy. I need to find something that's going to make me think, grow every day that I do it um, until I decide to move on with something else. But right now I need something different, you know, something different and better, not just different for them. So uh, number four on here is consistency. And um, a lot of people say, well, you know, 
working hard. I can work hard, but it's it's about that. How how long can you work hard for, right? We, right. And most people, it's it's about five days. It's a work right. week. Yeah. <laughs> so how did you how did you find that consistency with yeah. uh, for your success? Well, um, I'm not sure about other boot camps, but Dev Mountain, they're pretty sure they pretty. I, I believe that they pretty much made it made sure we were consistent every day. So we would have a toy problem at the beginning. We would have some exercises tailored to the topic, and then we would have a project at the end of the day. And you pretty much needed to be on track a part to get, you know, your say so from Dev Mountain, like, hey, like this person on paper or whatever is, uh, you know, a developer. And the other thing was kind of going back to hard work and, and where I came from, it was like, you know, for a fact that you have to do this every day for however long you can until it's time to take a break or, or just push through it because you can go back to where you came from. Consistency, I pretty much just followed the curriculum. Um, but I tried to make sure that there was something extra I did every day, whether it was looking up jobs or just something building upon that goal, even if it wasn't just code for the last two hours of the day before I went to sleep or something like that, you know, like after the, the day was over, after 5 p.m. Just making sure that something I'm putting my hand in a basket, dropping something out at the end of the day that says, hey, this is adding on to me being better the following day. If I can keep doing that, then after three months, you know, I, I should be way better. I thought you, you talked about that after like sort of the work day, after the day. Because yeah. I, I truly believe that that one, two, three hours that you can devote to yourself every day, like most people never do anything for themselves. They work their job and then they, they go and that's it. They go and veg out whatnot. But if you just yeah. put one to two hours a day into your own personal development, whether it's yeah. like the gym, whether that's coding, right. whatever it is, it, it is surprising how far it will take you. Yeah. And if like I barely watch, I don't even have TV subscription at home. I have internet, the basic channels and Netflix. Like I barely watch that. It's like either I'm looking up something I'm into or just trying to, you know, grow some kind of way. So like you can, the, the amount of time you spend doing one thing that's not like that can be done any other time adds up. And then when you see the magnitude of using those one or two hours, it's like, whoa, like, okay, I probably should stop doing this and, and continue, you know, trying to grow myself in whatever area for an extra two hours before bed or something. So with all long-term success comes with having a plan. So how did you, on your on your last note here, go about creating it? And what was sort of some of the items that may have succeeded in your plan and some of the items that perhaps didn't? Yeah, I guess the first thing was the time frame. You cannot set a time frame in which you want a job because it just doesn't work that way. When I left in November, I was like, March, that's it. I'm gonna have a plan, March. But no, ended up being May. So I was like, all right, whatever. But I guess to speak more upon having a plan, it gives you a sense of direction. Because the boot camp moves so fast, you need to make sure that whether it's a mental note, a, a daily journal, or just something, you need to make sure that you have something that you're crafting once job hunting time comes or it's time to go back home or visit. You know, that way you when you leave that Dare Mountain environment, because once you leave that boot camp, it's totally different. It's like your kids dropping you, 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 you dropping your kids off or your parents dropping you off at kindergarten that first day. It life hits you hard once you're like, all right, now I gotta go look for a job. I was in fairy tale land. Now I gotta go look for a job. And having a plan behind that gives you a motive, it gives you a reason to wake up every day versus just saying, Hey, I'm looking for a job. No, I'm looking for 15 good applications I can apply today before lunch, or you know, something like that. And as far as my plan, I pretty much just try to make sure that week to week I was up to par with everything on the curriculum. And try to make sure that I pushed myself a little more the f for the following week. But yeah, a plan definitely helps out because, it, like I said, it gives you a sense of direction. And then it makes sure that that consistency and hard work transfers once you leave that mountain because it can easily drop. Trust me. Yeah, it's 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 very hard. And I've talked about this about like um, people who go the self-taught route where, you know, you have teachers and you have parents that are kind of on top of you. But when you have to be your own sort of gatekeeper and hold yeah. yourself accountable, that freedom is something that you can either rise yourself up to, with or something that you can sink your own ship with if you're right, not. Prepared. Exactly. Yeah. Like, for example, like a couple of days out of Dev Mountain, like I realized like, hey, I don't have to wake up and do breakfast and go downstairs and, you know, do a curriculum and stuff. Now I have to ask, like start a project all over or search for jobs. And it hit me hard. It was like, whoa, like we were in a bubble for a while. And it was a good bubble to be in, but it was like you were in a bubble for a while, but now you're in the real world. Like make sure you follow your plan, you know? That was one of the things that hit me hard when I left. So on that note, we've we've talked about five ways to be successful. If you had to give one sort of example of 
because not not every you know whenever there's some people working really hard there's always some people who see a get rich quick scheme that aren't ready to put the work in yeah so what is what would be the one thing that you would say to avoid or you're going to be unsuccessful in a boot camp if you're looking for the boot camp to be the reason you get a job you might as well not even do it because dev mountain as an entity or whatever boot camp you want to attend they're not there to say hey we turn developers everybody in this cohort into a developer if you take this program they say hey if you work hard and you work diligently and you do how things how you should be doing then you know you're you should get a job after a certain amount of time of just working hard you know it's up to you it's not up to the entity of the boot camp or the company that you attend that's one thing don't don't have the the boot camp thing like i'm a boot camp grad hire me like no it's not going to work you know they need to see what you're actually capable of first nice well, James, I appreciate you coming on and uh, kind of going full circle. I, I haven't had a guest before sort of from the pre, like, look, man, I'm about to do it. Yeah. And then now we're here. And like, because everyone, anything in life, you, you get people who are like, yo, I'm about to do it. And like, there's so many people who just give up, right? Or just yeah, are all talk. Up, man. And so I, I appreciate you showing, showing back up. And here we are, man. I knew we were going to be here. I, but uh, it's always good when you, you kind of... You get that success. So yeah, man, thanks for having me. Thanks for reaching out for sure. Um, if, if anybody, you know, has questions or anything or want to talk to me or whatever, just feel free to reach out to me through Dylan or anybody. You know, I don't have a problem with that. I can answer questions, anything. So just, you know, feel free to reach out. Do you have a, a blog or, or anything that you want to promote? Uh, um, just my LinkedIn, James Scott. Um, probably have to put Florida after it because there's like a million James Scott. Instagram and Facebook, I'm not really on, but you can add me on um, um, Facebook at James Scott. But LinkedIn is probably the best place to reach me for like professional stuff. All right. Well, thank you so much. And uh, we'll have to probably do a third one. Uh, after, sure. You know, yeah. James, C James Senior Dev, two years that's later. That's it. <laughs> Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out my 100 algorithm challenge course, get you prepped for those technical interviews to make sure you get nice offers. I actually just added some new content to it so you can get prepared for those technical phone screens as well. There's a link in the description to get it for just $9.99.